Hey guys, Greg here. Today let's talk about binary numbers as well as something called bit manipulation. Now let's say we had a number like 33. What that really is, is 33 in base 10. We don't generally write this because we're used to base 10, but you could really use any base you want. You're basically taking this number and this is three times 10 to the zero because 10 to the zero is just one. So that's giving you three. And then you're adding to that what this represents, which is three times 10 to the one. And so if you were to math this out here, you'd get three times times 10 plus 3 times 1, which of course is equal to 33. But we don't have to use base 10. You could represent 33 in any base, say base 2, which is binary, base 16, which is hexadecimal. There's tons of different bases you could use. So let me show you how you can take 33 in base 10 and convert it to binary. So what you do is you basically just keep dividing by 2 and record remainders. You get 33, you divide it by 2, and you're going to get 16 with a remainder of 1. So now we have 16. We take 16 and we divide that by 2. You're going to get an even 8 with a remainder of 0. Now you have 8, so 8 divided by 2 is going to give you 4 with a remainder of 0. Now you have 4, so divided by 2, you're going to get 2 with a remainder of 0. You're going to take 2, divide that by 2, get 1 with a remainder of 0. And finally, you take 1, you divide that by 2, so it's going to be 0 with a remainder of 1. Then your binary number is just going to be these numbers in this order like like this. So you're going to take this one, that's going to be first here, you'll take this zero, so zero, you're going to take this zero, so zero, then zero, then zero, then one. Okay, now let's check our math to see if that really works here. So we're claiming that this is the binary representation of 33. So what this would mean is this means that it's going to be one times our base of two to the zero, this would be zero times two to the one, but that's not going to help because it's just zero. Same with all of these, this would be the two to the twos, this would be the 2 to the 3s, this would be the 2 to the 4s, but they're all zeros. So then we would have 1 times 2 to the 5. And so in total here, we're going to get 32 plus 1, which of course is equal to 33. So here, we basically just converted this back into base 10. And just some terminology here, we'd call any of these positions a bit. So this is a 1 bit, this is a 0 bit. And basically, this is a 6 bit number because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits to represent it. Now, 6 bit numbers don't really exist, generally we have bits in powers of 2. So you might have like a 4-bit number, an 8-bit number, 16, 32, 64, and so on. So for this lesson, let's just use 8-bit numbers. So you would pad this with zeros, and now it's an 8-bit number. So again, this would be the 2 to the 0 column, this would be 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, all the way up until this is going to be the 2 to the 7 column. Now technically what I just showed you is called an unsigned integer, and the sign we mean like plus or minus. There is no sign to this number meaning it's just positive. But of course, you would want to allow negative numbers. So to do that, we would need to use what are called signed integers, which means that the first digit is actually going to be representing the sign of the number. So if it is a zero, that means it is positive. And if it is a one, then it is going to be negative. So that means that it is negative, whatever this number represents here. And so it's still going to be one times two to the zero plus one times two to the five. And so it's still going to be 33. And so it's going to be negative 33. Now generally in computer science we do need negative numbers so we're mostly going to stick with signed numbers for this course. Okay now this is the representation of minus 33 in binary using a signed integer. However there is something here that's a little bit annoying that I do have to explain and we're going to have to use. To store negative numbers in computers we generally use what's called the twos complement. So let me write that down. The twos complement representation of the number. And so let me show you here how to write the twos complement version of minus 33. So what you would do is you'd first write down the magnitude. So ignoring the sign at all, it's just 33. Okay, so this is how you would represent 33. You could do your repeated division and you would find out that it's this number. However, because it is a negative, we're not just going to simply place a one there to mark it as negative. We're going to convert this to its twos complement representation, which just means take this number, the positive version of the number, we're going to flip all of the digits and then add add one. So let's flip all of the digits. We're going to make that a one, a one. This flips to zero, one, 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 and zero. And then we add one. So adding one is just going to end up converting this to a one. This number right here is the twos complement representation of negative 33. Now I'm not going to explain why we need to use this, but basically in computers, that is how they're going to be stored for very easy mathematical translations, which we're going to learn about right now. So firstly, let's learn about adding binary numbers. So let's do five 
5 plus 7. Now while you could do the long division to figure out what these are in binary, it's actually pretty easy to just eyeball these low numbers. So to get 5, it's just going to be 4 plus 1, so that's going to be 1, 0, 1, and the rest would be zeros here. And then to get 7, it's just going to be 1s for all three of these. Okay, then to add these two numbers together here, the 1 and the 1 is going to make a 0 with a carryover of 1. That's going to bring 1 and 1, which again it makes a 0. We carry over a 1. This is going to make a 3, and so it's actually going to be a 1 with a carryover of 1. And then here it's just going to be 1, and the rest are going to be zeros here. So let's see if we got that right here. That means that this is going to be 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 2. So that means that it's going to be 8 plus 4, which is equal to 12. So clearly we got that right. Okay, let's do this again, except now instead of plus, we're going to do 5 minus 7. And so we're still going to use addition, but we're basically just going to convert this to be 5 plus minus 7. And for minus 7, we need that to be in its 2's complement representation. So 5 is going to stay exactly the same. And then for negative 7 in 2's complement, you would want to write down exactly what 7 is by itself, which is this. And then you need to flip all of the digits and add 1. So that's going to make it 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. You add 1, that's just going to make this a 1. So this is minus 7 in 2's complement. And then you just need to add these two things together. Okay, so to add these two things together, we're going to get this as a zero that carries up one. We're going to make this a one. This is a one. And from here, they're actually all just going to be ones. Now this number is in its twos complement form. To actually verify if it is correct, it's a little bit annoying, but what you could do is take it out of twos complement and verify. So to do that, you would still flip all the digits and add one. So if you flip the digits, you're going to get this. And then if you add one, that's going to make this a zero, and it's going to make this one a one, and then you would just compute what this is. Well, this number is just two to the one, so it's equal to two. Well, as we know, it should equal negative two. It's not hard to do that math. And so even though this is a zero, we just know that this is negative two because in its two's complement representation, this is a one, which literally means that it is a negative number. We're just converting it back out to see what it represents. Okay, so that's how to do adding and subtracting. As you can see, it's a little annoying to work with negative numbers numbers and so we're not going to do too much of that it's just too much to deal with so let's stick with five and seven and let me show you the common bit manipulation techniques that come up often in leak code so there's basically six of them. There is and, which is going to be marked by an ampersand. There is or, which is going to be marked by a bar. There is xor, which is marked by a plus with a circle around it. There is logical not or negation, and that's marked by a tilde. And then there's two different types of bit shifts, which are called left shift. And that's generally marked by these two tags like this pointing to the left. And then there is right shift, which is going to be exactly the same, except it is going to be pointing over to the right. And as we'll see, right shift actually branches out into two different categories called logical right shift as well as arithmetic right shift. And some programming languages only have one of the two and some of them have both. Okay, so let's start with and, which is gonna be five and seven. So to do a logical and operation between these two, basically what you're doing is just and a bunch of times. So let me write a little mapping over here, zero and zero, that is equal to zero. Zero and one, that is equal to zero. One and zero is just the reflection, which will still be zero but finally one and one that is equal to one so basically you just follow that rule over and over again here so this will be one we translate this over here and so this is going to be zero if we translate this it's going to be a one and for all of these we're actually just going to get zeros so this is the and operation of five and seven and so you would interpret this as a signed integer if this was a one here and it was negative you'd have to do the two's complement stuff but we're going to stick with positive numbers so five and seven makes this number Number, which actually just turns out to be 5 as we can see. Okay, let's switch this to OR, which is going to be the pipe. So to do 5 OR 7, that is another bitwise operation. And so 0 OR 0 is equal to 0, but all of the other ones are 1, because you have at least one side. So 1 OR 0 is going to equal 1, 0 OR 1 is just the reflection, which is also 1, and 1 OR 1 is also equal to 1 as well. Okay, so we'll do that here. It would be 1, 1, 1, and then the rest of these are all going to be zeros here. So as we can see, 5 or 7 is actually equal to 7. Okay, let's change this to x or, which is marked by a plus and a circle around it. So the x or operation between these two, and it's very, very similar to or, so I'm just going to kind of replace it with this right here. There's just one minor difference. We call it x or 
because it's short for exclusive or. The exclusive or means that one of the sides is true and the other is false. So only one of them is true. And so this one here, where both of them are true, this one is actually going to be converted to a zero. Now XOR is very common in leak code because basically what it does is it cancels out where they're the same. So it's going to cancel out all of these pieces and just leave it where they're different here. And so this is going to be a one. And then the rest of these are all going to be marked with zeros. So we'll see that in the problems, but that's one of the main reasons that XOR is used. And so as you can see, 5XOR7, that is just equal to 2 to the 1, which is 2. Okay, now let's do the NOT operator, which is marked as a tilde, and you just do it on one number. It's called a unary operator. So tilde 5 would just mean flip the bits. So if the original 5 is again this right here, then NOT that would just mean flip the bits. So it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. And what's super annoying about this is this is the representation in normal form, but it is now a negative number because this is a one. We have to convert it to its twos complement representation. What you would again do is flip the bits and add one. So we flip the bits. So this is going to be, of course, exactly what it was a moment ago. And then you add one. So this is going to make it a zero and this is going to make it a one. Okay, so what really is this number? Well, it's going to be two to the two plus two to the one, which is just equal to six. And we know that it's really negative six because what we did is had a negative and then we converted it over. So the answer to this is negative six. Okay, now let's show a left shift. So a left shift means that we're gonna have a number like five and then we're gonna left shift it by some number of positions like n. So here, let's show the example of five left shift by two. What that means is we just shift the bits left by two positions. What that means is that one gets shifted over left to be here, so this will be a one. The zero gets shifted over to be here, so this will be a zero. This one gets shifted over to here, so this is going to be a one. And you can just think about it as whatever is here is just what it is two steps back. So this is going to be a zero, this is going to be a zero, and this is also going to be a zero. Now we have two spaces on the right that had nothing because you're basically shifting nothing into these positions. And so when you do that, you just pad it with zeros here. You'd interpret this number by if this is zero, one, two, three, four. So this is the fours column. Then this would be two to the four plus two to the two which is equal to 16 plus 4, which is equal to 20. So that tells us that 5 left shifted by 2 is equal to 20. Okay, now let's do a right shift, which is marked like this. Now let's do a right shift of just 1. So that means this is going to be over here. So this will be a 0. What's here goes here. And so this will be a 0. You can think about it as just whatever's here is going to be one step back. So this is a 0, a 0, a 0. This is a 1. And this is a 0. Now there's empty space over here. And what it gets padded by actually depends on the right shift that you do. So there is two different right shift. One is called an arithmetic right shift and the other is called a logical shift. Now arithmetic shift is also called a sign shift because basically what it does is it keeps the sign of the original number. So if the original number here, if this is a zero, that means that it's positive. And so in that case, we keep the sign and so it's zero. If this was actually a negative number, so that'd be marked by this being a one, then in that case, this would be changed to a one. If we were to instead do a right logical shift, well, then this is going to be replaced with a zero no matter what. So even if this was a one, this is still going to be a zero. Okay, so firstly, let's convert a decimal number to its binary representation. So to do that, you would just write bin of a decimal number like five. The zero B just means that it's basically binary. And then here is the actual binary string. Now this part's a little bit weird. So to chop that off, we would just write to colon and that gets rid of the first two. So this is the proper binary string representing the decimal number of five. Okay, now the opposite to convert a binary number to a decimal number, what you would do is have some binary representation, say binary five is the string above, so one, zero, one. And then you just use our normal int function where you'd pass in that representation and then you would tell it the base that it's currently in. So it's in base two, which is binary. You could be in any base that you want. So you'd pass in the current base of two with your representation that is going to output your decimal number of five. Okay, now we'll just go through the different operations we have. So for a bitwise and operation, that is going to be the ampersand. So you would do five and seven. That's a bitwise and. The normal and you would use in if statements in Python is just like that. This is the bitwise and. So five and seven, that gives you the number of five. We could do a bitwise or operation. That is the pipe. So we would do five or seven, and that's going to give you seven. We could do a bitwise x or operation with the caret actually. So 5x or 
four seven is going to be two. We could do a bitwise not operation. So basically the negation operation. If you do tilde five, that's going to flip the digits. And so that's going to give you negative six. We could do a left shift operation. So we could do five less than less than two is a left shift. Now there is two different types of left shifts in theory, but in Python, we actually only have arithmetic right shift. So this is called a signed right shift, meaning you preserve the sign of the original number. And so to do that, it would be five right shifted by one. And that gives us our result of two. Now, one last thing we didn't really get a chance to talk about is called hexadecimal. And this is in base 16. So what that means is that zero is zero, one is one, two is two, and so on. But then when you get to the number of 10, well, that is actually represented by an A. And 11 is represented by B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, and 15 is F. So you have your normal zero to nine, which is 10 digits. And then if you have A, that means that it is 10. If you have B, that means it's 11, C is 12, and so on. So let's say we had a decimal number like five. If you wanted to know how that was written in hex, you could just do hex of five, and that is going to write it as zero X, which marks that it's using hexadecimal system. And then it is actually just five because we have the digit for that. If you have something like 11, that is going to just be B, B is 11. If you have 12, that is going to be C, and if you had a bigger number, like say 25, well, we're getting 0x19. So what that means is you're getting 1 times 16 to the 1, plus you're going to get 9 times 16 to the 0, where this is just 1 and this is just 16. So you're getting 16 plus 9, which is equal to 25. And if you had an even bigger number, like say 890, that turns out to be in hex 37a. So what that means is you're getting 3 times 16 to the 2, plus an additional 7, times 16 to the 1 plus a, except a is actually the number that's representing 10. So plus 10 times 16 to the 0. And we could actually calculate this, although be careful because in Python, this is actually bitwise XOR as we saw and not exponent. So this is actually the exponent button. So if we were to calculate that, we will see that it is equal to 890. Okay, guys, so all the code can be found in the description below. Be sure to check out algomap.io if you haven't already and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.